Good afternoon, Virgin Islands. I am live at the HLSCC atrium at the Environmental Sustainability Exhibit, which is part of the OECS, that's the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Council of Ministers of the Environment, Environment Sustainability Meeting, which the meeting itself was unfortunately postponed, but the exhibit has happened this week and we've had a really good time. We had a good turnout today. So thanks to everybody who came through. And we just want to show, share with you who were not able to come out a bit of what the exhibit was all about. Okay, so we've had many local partners that have participated, a number of our environmental NGOs, starting with Green VI. So I'm going to turn it over to my colleague to say a little bit about what the exhibit is all about. My name is Lorna Dawson. I'm an outreach officer with Green VI. We are a not-for-profit organization that's basically very concerned about helping to create a cleaner, greener, healthier BVI. And so today, for this past few days, we've had on display some of the different things that we use. We have this here, it's called Polywood, and it's made from recycled plastic. So your number twos, which are like your Clorox bottles, your detergent bottles. Then we also use styrofoams and your plastic bags. They're melted and put in a mold, and then we get this. And from that, we make recycle bins. This is what it looks like when it's crushed. And the finished product is used to make recycled bins. Um, we also use it to make compost bins. We've used it to make garden sheds for schools to store their tools and garden beds. We've been doing work with the schools as a part of a smart school project, and we've been teaching them the importance of planting your own food. So these are samples of children work that we've done with children, teaching them about mosquitoes, energy conservation, um, composting, really reducing, managing our waste so that so much isn't going to the landfill. Um, in our garden, these are some of the samples of the plants that we've planted. And we've also created a number of games that we use with the students to reinforce when we've done presentations, we use games to reinforce what we've taught. So you can see Green VI had a lot of exciting information to share and over in this section we had two exhibitors focused on, on, on our underwater life. ARC, which is the Association of Reef Keepers in the BVA, they do a lot of great work with coral reefs, helping to treat various coral diseases and also looking at um, reef restoration. So. They have not had a person on site, but there's lots of great materials for people to have explored. And I think some of this is also available at ARC's website. We had with us, unfortunately they've left, but we also had Beyond the Reef and they had a really engaging exhibit where they shared videos and had students play with Play-Doh and other things to show what work they do with treating corals, again, from various diseases. They also do a lot of research about sharks and whales. Yes, we have lots of whales in the Virgin Islands and other really interesting marine life that lives and migrates through our waters. Um, and they do a lot also to keep the marine environment clean. So they had a really engaging exhibit. And then we have the ministry itself, Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources and Climate Change. And our exhibition is focused on the impacts of climate change in the Virgin Islands. So we go through everything. If we come over here to the left, we start with explaining the basic changes in climate, which we're concerned about. So first and foremost, rising temperatures. We're about to cross that critical threshold of 1.5 degrees C, sorry, above pre-industrial temperatures. And we can all feel how hot it is. And I'm sorry to be the buster, but it's only going to get warmer. The projections right now are showing that by the end of this century, so in the lifespan of many people among us today, our young people, we could be looking at a rise of up to almost four and a half degrees Celsius above pre-industrial um, levels. So that's a huge different from difference from life as we have known it. And that is driving other changes in our climate, including changing rainfall patterns. We've seen the extremes of more frequent heavy rainfall events leading to flooding. And we've all seen that locally. Um, we can also experience more extreme and prolonged drought. Then there's the issue of the stronger hurricanes. We've all seen, again, another record breaking with Hurricane Beryl. 
becoming a Category 5 hurricane in June. This is absolutely unprecedented. It also exhibited what we call rapid intensification, which is a very concerning trend that we're seeing with hurricanes, with climate change. They go from being weak storms to powerful storms in a matter of hours sometimes. And this was all projected. So those of us in the climate change space, we're seeing this scary reality unveil itself. And then there's a matter of sea level rise. So because it's getting warmer, ice sheets at the South and North Poles are melting. So we have new ice <laughs> coming into the sea as, as water. And it's the equivalent of dropping a cube of ice into a glass of water. The water level will rise. And as small islands with so much of our infrastructure and investments in the low-lying coastal areas, that's a big deal for us. So our exhibit goes through how those four key changes in climate are going to impact everything in the Virgin Islands, from our environment to our human health, to our built environment and utilities, and all of our economic pillars, including tourism. So that's probably too much for me to talk through right now, but this information we will have available on our website, bvi.gov.vg forward slash climate change. So please go there and read up more about climate change impacts in the Virgin Islands. And just to say, this is not something of the future. This is happening now. These news headlines are taken from online and paper um, news, well, hard copy newspapers in the Virgin Islands. And these show some of the impacts we're experiencing. The stronger... Um, flood events, the stronger hurricanes, um, even the sargasm influxes that everybody hates. This is connected directly to climate change. Coral bleaching, even the enhanced Sahara dust effect is connected to climate change because the Sahara desert is actually becoming drier as a result of climate change. So we have enhanced Sahara dust clouds, which is actually causing an increase in asthma. We're having increase in dengue fever incidents. We're seeing for the first time in our history extreme heat warnings in the news. So all of this is plaguing us right now as a result of climate change. So adaptation then, things that we can do to reduce the impacts becomes very important. And as a Ministry of Environment, we've used this opportunity to highlight how important nature is going to be in that adaptation process. So we have here a working model that shows how extremely effective mangroves are at protecting our coastline from storm surge, those big waves that happen in hurricane events. So research has been done and it shows that just a 100 meter stand, so a 100 meter width of mangrove can actually reduce the height of waves by almost 70%, that's seven zero, 70%. And they're very good at this because they have these amazing prop roots which are very complex and intertwined so they serve as very effective barriers to wave energy and those same roots act to filter sediment and trap sediment that runs off the hillsides so they keep our waters nice and pristine but as they trap the sediment they build up new land so they also have this sort of mounding effect that also serves as a barrier so we've had tons of people come here and try to get the waves to crash through and nobody has been able to do it. So the mangroves are working very well. And just last night, I was chatting with a civil engineer who's a good friend of mine. And he said this, he sent this to me on WhatsApp and I just had to print it out and share it with everybody. So these are in the words of a very experienced civil engineer. Mangroves are such an unappreciated part of nature. They are better at coastal defense than anything we can ever, ever engineer. And not only are they better, but they're free and they're self-maintaining and they come with other benefits like being amazing habitats for our juvenile fish and so many other things. So please, let's protect our mangroves. We've already lost over 60% of the mangroves from the southern coast of Tortola alone, and that's been through sort of careless development practices since the 1950s. But there is, you know, things that we can do. We can protect what we have left. And as we come around the side here, you'll see that the college has a very important program going. They have a nursery where they're replanting, where they're planting mangoes to be able to outplant them and restore mangrove forests across the Virgin Islands. So I encourage people to get involved in the mangrove nursery project. You can volunteer your time. You can contribute funding to make it happen. So the college has a nice exhibit here going through some of the other work that they do um, beyond the nursery. So they do a lot of research, they do work on water quality, etc. 
And then we have the OECS Commission itself with an exhibit that talks more about the impacts of climate change regionally and also focuses quite a bit on forest and the important role that forest plays in terms of helping us to adapt. So again, thinking about how nature will be a key ally in the Virgin Islands and the Caribbean more widely, becoming more resilient to climate change. And then of course, we have the virtual reality experience which is right on the upstairs and everybody has really had a great time. So we're gonna run upstairs quickly. Maybe we can pause while we run upstairs. Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Dr. Danny Pimentel. I'm from the University of Oregon and I'm here with a great team from the Hydrus University of Gothenburg and working with the OECS. We're exploring how virtual reality can help us address SDG 14 down there, life below water. How can we use this technology to connect audiences locally, abroad, with issues facing our oceans and all marine life? And so we're really excited. We created a virtual reality experience, which over several hundred people tried over the last three days, where we got to take them on a virtual dive. Uh, got to see from ridge to reef how the actions that we take on land affect all the life below water. So we're really excited to share that experience with kids, adults, the whole gamut. We're so excited to be here. Do you want me to start talking now? Sure. So now we're seeing our participants putting on their virtual goggles. You can't go on a virtual dive without your goggles, your snorkeling mask. And that's what these are today. They're going to go on a virtual dive from ridge to reef. And we'll get to document the entire process, okay? I'm going to ask you what you're seeing at key points. I want you to describe what you're seeing. Okay. And this one? Oh, I don't know how to swim. I'll surely be drowning in here. <laughs> no, no drowning. <laughs> Tell me what you're seeing. Oh, it's about to. Ah, oh, I'm seeing a forested area with brown waters running down a stream. And what about you? What are you seeing? I'm seeing the river flowing. I'm at the beach now. <laughs> oh. Are you ready to go underwater? Under the water. Whee! Whee! <laughs> ah. So what else do you see? I am under the water where I'm seeing uh, vegetation, little fishes that are swimming. Do you feel like you're actually there? Yes. Look around. Look around you. Uh, I do. Look left and right. Let's see what you see. Oh, oh. Okay. Up and down, you see the sky above you. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And so her body is physically here, but her mind is transported underwater. She is underwater exploring the ocean, and it feels real. What are you trying to touch? So we just saw a healthy reef, but now we're going to show you how some of the negative effects of the things featured in this video are affecting coral health. Do you want to describe what are the issues you're seeing? Oh, I am seeing a ship and a long anchor that is dragging along the seabed. Uh. and make every effort to reduce, reuse, recover. So it's not just about showing the beauty of our coral, but showing the negative effects that we as humans have on the coral. Hopefully seeing it in VR gets people to care more, to have a deeper connection, and feel more motivated to take action locally, regionally, and at the national level. That's why we use this technology. It's incredibly empowering and emotionally powerful. 
Okay, so the now the coral to the bottom of the sea is kind of white. Is that saying that it's destroyed? Yeah, that is dead. Uh, coral bleached. She's completing the journey now, from land into the depths and back. This, v this VR experience is publicly available on OECS YouTube, so if you have a computer, you can watch it on your screen. If you have a headset, you can watch it at home and go on this journey countless, countless times, like many of our visitors did. Some kids tried it five times. It's incredibly, uh, really exciting experience. Uh, welcome back, how do you feel? Oh. Yeah? You wanna take the headset off and hand it to me? <laughs> Welcome back. Uh -huh. That was awesome. That was awesome. How was it? Ooh. What was it's, your favorite part? Uh, when I could look up and see the ship yeah. from from the depth, mm -hmm. but I also love the beauty beyond the sea. Yeah. yeah, the good side of it. Sad to see where the reefs are dying, and you know we are responsible right. for it. Do you think this technology is an effective, powerful way to communicate some of those issues? Definitely, but I would love to see it expanded more to give more details, especially to, suit, to children who are now venturing out into the sea. Right. But that, that was a unique first time because I can't swim, but I went to the depth. Now you can say you went on a dive, right? It's possible with virtual reality. So Kathy, after that amazing dive, now we have to take you back to land and into another amazing ecosystem, into the forest. So we'll come over this way. Um, and like I said earlier, the OECS Commission has put on a really fantastic exhibit that focuses on climate change impacts, but also on forests. And just like the mangroves that we saw earlier, just like the coral reefs that you just came from exploring, forests also play a very critical role in climate change adaptation. I mean, first and foremost, forests breathe in carbon dioxide. So they play an important role in trying to mitigate against climate change by sucking some of that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And we have some countries in the Caribbean like Guyana, which have massive forest reserves and actually play a critical role on the global scale in terms of mitigation against climate change. Um, but beyond that, in terms of an adaptation side of things, forest, you know, they bind the soil together, they reduce the impact of rainfall as it comes in, in um, flood type events and helps to have the rain percolate into the soil as opposed to wash down the land and, um, you know, affect our communities. So it's very critical that we protect our forest and keep that tree cover that's going to ultimately protect us. Now, we've had a, an amazing collaboration with the OECS Commission in putting on this exhibit. I really have to give them the credit. Their team has worked over three days to put this exhibit together and make it the spectacular display that it is. So I want to give kudos to the OECS Commission. As I said earlier, this is all part of an annual meeting that is held, and the meeting goes around to different member states of the OECS, and it was the Virgin Islands turn to host the meeting this year. That's the annual Council of Ministers of Environmental Sustainability, where all of the ministers across the OECS region responsible for the environment portfolio meet, and they discuss important matters like climate change, um, like forests, um, that everything connected to how we are going to attain our sustainable development goals and ensure that our environment is protected in this region and can continue to serve us. So, although the meeting was postponed on account of Hurricane Beryl, it will happen and those important discussions will happen. So, we're very, very happy to be the host this year and look forward to some time in the near future where we can welcome the ministers and maybe even have this exhibition extended. Hopefully, we'll keep our fingers crossed. So, those who didn't get to experience it in person might be able to experience it again. So, thank you so much for coming out and experiencing this with us through this medium. We know that where you choose to bank matters, and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official Bank of Paradise, 
we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Are you searching for new home decor items that reflect the season's latest trends? Look no further than Right Way Home. From cushion sets to decorative vases, we have unique pieces to suit every style and budget. Discover your right find at the right price, only at Right Way Home and Right Way Stores.